high call series. Let us practice filling the blanks with F or PH to complete the following words. So here we have a set of 14 words, set of 14 words and all these 14 words have one particular thing common and that is the sound F. Okay, F is a common sound in all these 14 words. Now, we know we can use either F or PH. What can we use? F or PH can be used to make the sound of food. Now, we need to check these words and select either F or PH with which we can make these words a complete ones. Right? Okay, the first one A L dash A B E T. So that is what is the word there? Can you guess it? Yes, that is alphabet, isn't it? So what is the spelling of alphabet? A-L-P-H-A-B-E-T alphabet, right? So for making the sound F, we have used P-H there, right? Now the next one, I-S-H. F-I-S-H, isn't it? Fish. F-I-S-H, fish. Dash A-S-E. If it was a CE, then we might have written F A C E, but that is not the C here, it is S here, so we need to uh, write a PH there, isn't it? P H A S E, phase. Phase means uh, stages. First stage, second stage, third stage, isn't it? Yeah, just like that. Now the fourth one, D O L dash I N. Dolphin. D O L. P H I N. What is the spelling of dolphin? D O L P H I N dolphin. Right. Dash I da N A L. Final. F I N A L final. Simple. Dash I N I S H. Finish. F I N I C H finish dash Y S I C I A N physician. So the spelling of a physician is a P H Y S I C I A N physician. Right now, the next one is O R P H A N orphan. O R P H A N orphan. Ninth one is uh, fame. Mm, fame starts with F, isn't it? F A M E, fame. F. Now, K N I F E knife, isn't it? Tenth one. K N I F E knife. Eleven. Dash O T O G R A. Yeah, photograph. Photograph. So P H. O T O G R A P H photograph. So it starts with the PH, end with the PH because photograph. Is it? The first sound is a photo. So fo. Last photograph. Graph. Fo. Again. Is it? Yes. P L I F E life. L I F E life. A U T O G R A P H. What is that? Autograph. Fourteenth one is a F R A M E frame. F R A M E frame. Right. So A L P H A B E T alphabet. F I S H fish. P H A S E face. D O L P H I N dolphin. F I N I F final, F I N I S H finish, P H Y S I C I A N physician, O R P H A N orphan, F A M E fame, K N I F E knife, P H O T O G R P H photograph, L I F E life, A U T O G R P H autograph, F R A M E free. Right? 
Okay, so now I will keep the screen the same for another minute for you so that you can uh, read it yourselves once again, right? Yes, <clears throat> it's let us converse now. Let us converse. So you will uh, listen to a conversation here first, a conversation between two girls. And after completing that, I will give you the wordings of this conversation so that you can practice it yourselves. Okay. So once when the schools get reopened, you can go and uh, mm, practice it with your friends over there or you can play it as a game with your brothers or sisters or your cousins or whoever is available at home. Now you will listen to this conversation first. Read the following conversation and enact it out with your partner in the class. Moni, Aisha. Hello Aisha, how was your Sunday? Hello. Oh, Sunday was great. I went for a nature walk with my family. Really? What is nature walk by the way? A walk in natural surroundings is a nature walk. An ideal place is a forest or a hilly place with streams according to me. Where did you go for the nature walk? We went to the green forest. The tall trees, the greenery all around and a clear stream in the forest helped us relax. We were so close to nature. How does a nature walk help us? Well, well, it relaxes our mind and helps us improve our ability to focus. One can enjoy the beauty of nature away from the hustle and bustle of a city. In that case, I will also ask my family to go for a nature walk into the green forest next week. Sure. Fine children. So you have listen to this conversation, isn't it? So now you will uh, read the wordings of this conversation. Uh, I will keep it on the screen for a minute so that you can uh, go through that. Okay. So after <coughs> let us converse, it's now time for the rhyme. There's a beautiful rhyme over here. I'll play that for you first, right? I'll play that for you first. And after playing it once, uh, I'll give you the wordings of this poem. Okay, I'll give you the wordings of this poem. 
you can also uh, you know practice singing that okay so now listen carefully here comes the poem read aloud the following poem and then recite it in a group in the class a forest has a green carpet its trees reach out to high skies we are forever busy and we fret peace and relaxation in nature lies let's go to the woods listen to the voices of trees and the breeze it will uplift our moods god's here and our worries will cease okay children so you have listened to the poem right now isn't it fine now i will give you the wordings of the poem so that you two can also practice it okay so i'll keep that particular uh, uh, wordings of the poem on the screen for a minute so that uh, you can practice it yourselves So we have completed the rhyme time, isn't it? We have listened to the poem now, and here we have some question answers based on this particular poem. So what is the first question? What do you understand by green carpet of the forest? So it said something about a green carpet in the poem, isn't it? So what do you mean by the green carpet? The green leaves of the trees looked like a green carpet of the forest. So there are a lot of green leaves in the forest, the trees, and the that just looks like a yeah, a beautiful green carpet is a yes, spread over there. Now, who is forever busy? Somebody is always busy over there. Who is that? People are forever busy. Now, the third one, how does one feel when one is close to nature? When we go very close to nature, how do we feel then? One feels peace and relaxation when he is close to nature. When we are very close to nature, we feel very peaceful and we feel much relaxed. Okay? So when we are close to nature, we feel peace and relaxation. Right, the fourth question, when we go to the woods, what should we listen to? When we go to the woods, what are the things that we have to listen to? What are they? 
we should listen to the voices of the trees and the breeze. When this breeze blow through the leaves of these uh, trees, it makes a very beautiful sound. Okay, a fluttering sound, a murmuring sound. It's quite beautiful. So when we go to a wood, what we need to listen to is a yeah, the beautiful music made by the trees with the help of the breeze. Right? Okay. Now, the fifth question. So, who lives amidst nature? God lives amidst nature, and that is why when we are really tired and fret, huh, we can go to the forest and we get uh, relieved, relaxed. Okay? So, who lives amidst nature? God lives amidst uh, nature. Right? Fine. The next question. Uh, Think of your own rhyming words for skies, busy, relaxation, woods, trees. So what we need to do now is, we need to find the uh, rhyming words for uh, the words skies, busy, relaxation, woods, trees. Okay, so we will do it one by one. Write skies. The two other rhyming words are uh, flies. Cries, skies, flies, cries, busy, daisy, noisy, busy, daisy, noisy, see, relaxation, relaxation, nation, station, relaxation, nation, station, woods, goods, hoods, Woods, goods, hoods, trees, fleas, bees. Right? So, what are the uh, rhyming words? Skies, flies, cries, busy, daisy, noisy, relaxation, nation, station, woods, goods, hoods, trees, fleas, bees. Right? Okay. So now I will keep the screen the same for another minute for you so that you can uh, yes, read the words once again. Okay. Writing skills. Transcription. Rewrite the given passage neatly in your notebook. 
mention the kind of each sentence. Right? So what is the passage there? Trees and the forests are very important for us. The animals and the birds will also have nowhere to go without them. Let's go to the quote. Why should forests be destroyed for the construction of all kinds of buildings and the skyscrapers? So this is a paragraph, actually a conversation that is converted into a paragraph from the lesson. Trees also can speak, isn't it? Yes. So now we need to identify the different sentences in that. Yes. Trees and the forests are very important for us. It's a sentence actually that belongs to the passage. Now, the animals and the birds will also have nowhere to go without them. The animals and the birds will also have nowhere to go without them. Let's go to the court. Let's go to the court. Why should forests be destroyed for the construction of all kinds of buildings and skyscrapers? Same sentence we are going to hear also. Right? So now what we need to do is we need to identify to which type of sentence do these sentences belong. We know four, four types of sentences are there now. Assertive sentence, imperative sentence, interrogative sentence, exclamatory sentences. Right? So assertive sentences are simple statements which starts with a capital letter and ends with a full stop. Uh, imperative sentences are sentences which convey order, request, command, huh? forgiveness, etc. They also start with a capital letter and ends with a full stop. The third one is uh, interrogative sentences which are used for actually asking questions. Right? So they start with a uh, capital letter and ends with a question mark. And uh, exclamatory sentences are those sentences which are used for expressing sudden feelings or expressions, they start with a capital letter, end with a exclamation mark, right? So now, the first sentence, trees and the forests are very important for us. So it actually starts with a capital letter, ends with a full stop, and it is an assertive sentence, okay? Yes. So that is an assertive sentence, isn't it? Yes, the animals and the birds will also have nowhere to go without them. It's also a common statement, common sentence, isn't it? Yes, that also starts with a capital letter, ends with a full stop. So this also is an assertive sentence. So we have one more assertive sentence here. Yes, jagged and dropped. Third, let's go to the quote. It's frightening the other person, isn't it? Let's uh, go to the court. Let's say in the court. So what kind of a sentence is that? Uh, it's an uh, imperative sentence, right? Imperative sentence. A sentence which is used for expressing commands, orders, uh, threatening and all. Then, why should forests be destroyed for the construction of all kinds of buildings and skyscrapers? It's asking someone, isn't it? Someone is asking something to somebody else. So it's a question and it has a capital letter and ends with a question mark. So such what kind of a sentence is that? Uh, interrogative sentence, right? Yes. So we have written all the four sentences from this particular paragraph. Trees and the forests are very important. The forest is an assertive sentence, it's a common statement. Then uh, the animals and the birds will also have nowhere to go without them. Also, it's a common statement, so we call it a assertive sentence. Let's go to the court. Is a threatening, so that is an imperative sentence. Why should forests be destroyed for the construction of all kinds of buildings and skyscrapers? Is a question, so that is called an interrogative sentence, right? So now I'll keep this screen the same for another minute for you so that uh, yes, you can also have a look at these sentences once again, right? So after that, when we read any sentence in English, say it's a newspaper or a comic book or a textbook, you can check which kind of sentences are used there in that, okay?
the writing skills. So it's composition again. Add your own words to complete the following sentences. Also stay to their times. So only half of the sentences are actually given here and we will complete it based on a, yes, what I think about it. Okay. You can write your own. No problem with that. And here, yes, we mentioned what kind of a sentence is that also. Fine. So the first one, I love to watch movies. So it's a common sentence starting with a capital letter, ending with a full stop and that is a assertive sentence. Right. Second one, I also like to play games. I also like to play games. It's also a common simple sentence. Uh, it's a capital letter here and a, a full stop here. So that is also an assertive sentence. Life is beautiful. Life is beautiful. So I'm expressing some feelings in me. Isn't it? Starts with a capital letter, ends with an exclamation mark. And what do you call a sentence which ends with an exclamation mark? It's called an exclamatory sentence. What do we call them? Exclamatory sentence, right? Okay. Next one. It's our duty to clean our surroundings. It's our duty to clean our surroundings. It's something like an order or a command, isn't it? You have to clear the yes, a dustbin. So if you have to make an order, command or request or something like that, then what kind of sentence do we use there? We use an imperative sentence. Hmm? Then, why can't you wait for a while? Why can't you wait for a while? It's a question. Isn't it? We are asking something to someone. And if you ask a question, then what kind of sentence is that? It's interrogative sentence. Okay? So, five sentences are there. Only well, part of that was given, the remaining part I've completed based on what I think. You can change it, no problem. But when you change it, make it sure that uh, you mention what kind of sentence you write on this part of the page also. Okay? So the first one is an assertive sentence. It's a simple common statement. The second is also an assertive sentence because that also is a common statement. Third is an exclamatory sentence because it's expressing a Ah, emotion or a feeling. The fourth one is an imperative sentence because it's a about a command or a, re, or a request or an order. The fourth one, a question. So that is an interrogative sentence. Clear? So I will give this screen the same for another minute for you so that you can yes, read the questions, read the statements given here and Copy only this part of the sentences, okay? Not the underlined part. Those areas without the underline, you can copy down in your notebook and uh, yes, complete that with your own wordings, okay? Right.
homework. So what's the homework given here? So imagine you went to a green forest for a nature walk with your family. Write a diary entry and describe what you saw there, how you felt and what did you know like the most. You may be writing, you may begin your writing with uh, today I went to a green forest in the morning with my family for a yes. So what we need to do now is we need to make a diary entry. We need to make a diary entry. So uh, you can take a sheet of paper, put the date on top, put today's a date on top and then write dear diary. Dear diary, today I went to the green forest in the morning with my family for a picnic. Today I went to the a uh, green forest with my family for a picnic as uh, then after that you can add your own parts like uh, whatever you have seen over there whatever you have done over there how you would have felt there all these things you can add to that like uh, uh, we reached there in the morning there were some other families also there huh? we saw some students playing there some kids were playing so we too went and joined them so one or two of those kids were so naughty. They had been continuously eating chocolates and throwing the wrappers down over there. Huh? Then uh, another family brought a lot of uh, you know, fruits and all and they cut these and all the waste were dumped here and there. They were not dumping them properly. Okay. And some students were so naughty that they even climbed the trees, broke its branches and all. Okay, then how you felt about it? As you felt a bit worried, you just moved out of it. You went into the uh, green forest. There you found huge trees. You just uh, walked around them. It was so fresh over there. Huh? It was so windy. It was so cool. And uh, if you want, you can add some other incidents also. Like for example, you just uh, leaned against a tree and sat there singing something or singing a song. Unfortunately, you fell asleep. So after some time when you woke up, you saw your father, mother and other people, the brother and the sister or somebody, they were in panic because you went missing. So you came back, you told them how you felt about it. Okay. And then um, uh, your father might have told you something about the importance of trees and all. Right. So in this way, you can write a diary entry. Right. So we need to include these kinds of things. What happened there? When you went there, what did you see there? How did you feel about it? Some good things, some bad things. And what is your opinion about it? Okay. So that is how we make a complete diary entry. And at the end, when you take leave, you write yours, your name. Okay. We start with the date, then calling dear diary. We describe whatever you want to say at the end. Yours, your name. Right? Fine. So I will keep this screen the same for another minute so that uh, you can have a look at it uh, and uh, copy this one sentence so that you can start with it. Okay?
project to work. The next is a project to work. So what is a project? Work in groups of four to collect the pictures and information about an special tree of your choice. Also make a poster and other things to be displayed in your class. Display board. It would be a good idea if some of you also write for lines on that tree. So we know there are a lot of trees in this world, isn't it? A lot of trees are there on this world. We know some trees very specifically and uh, there are still so many trees about, uh, that we do not know much. Plenty of trees are there. Okay. For example, there are some trees like uh, redwood trees are there. Redwood trees are one of the oldest trees in the world. So there are trees that are uh, for thousands of years old. Okay. They are mostly seen in uh, um, America. Okay. And you know, a tree is actually a, when uh, the regional development authority, when they want to lay a road, actually there was a tree on the way, a very huge tree. You know what they did? Yeah, they dug a tunnel through the tree. The tree is still standing there, but there is a tunnel through that. There is another tree called a baobab tree. Okay, that is an African tree basically. It has a very, you know, large trunk, which stores a lot of water inside it. You know, uh, baobab tree actually grows in the place where there is very less uh, water availability or rainfall. Okay. So when people who live in those areas actually make use of this tree. So there are plenty of such kinds of trees in the world and you can make a, yeah, a poster about a tree, collect some major information about a, where can we find these kinds of trees, what are the speciality of these kinds of trees, okay. And if you can write four lines of yourselves to that, it can be great for you. Right. So the project to work is to find some specific information about a, a kind of a tree. Right. So if uh, had we been in the school, it might have been a group activity. Our friends also might have been able to join us. But now if you're interested, you can do it alone also. There's no issue with that. Okay. value corner or something that we have learned for our life from this lesson. So what is that? Yes, all living creatures including trees need care and should be treated with understanding. We all want to meet God but we cannot find him in noise and restlessness. God is <coughs> the friend of silence. See, how in nature trees, flowers, grass grow in silence. See how the stars and the moon and the sun move in silence. We all need a silence to be able to reach out to every soul. 
So something that we have to learn for our life is that just like how we treat about ourselves, we need to treat other things around also in the same way. It's not just that we have the right to live and others do not. See, we do a lot of things as if we are in search of one thing, that is a God. Huh? We make a huge, uh, you know, uh, noises, sounds, huh? musical uh, programs, shoutings, isn't it? Yeah, during the time of festivals also we do the same thing. But with all these kinds of noises, it's not a godliness, but it is more a nuisance. Okay, see how the natural things are happening. The trees grow. Do they make a huge noise when they grow? No. When they bloom, when they bear the fruits, when the animals, birds and all, when they come and eat them? No. The sun rises, the moon rises, stars shine. Do they make any noise? No. So, making all these kinds of noises and all these kinds of things will never take us to the God. But being silent and do whatever we want to do and take care of the elements of nature around us. Plants, animals, other human beings, huh? natural elements. That is how we can be close to God. Okay. So, destruction is not the method to reach a God or any success. But a it can end up nowhere. The best way by which we can reach God is to take care of the nature, take care of the living things, of the beings, the living beings around us and serving them. All right? So that is something that we have learned from this lesson. Trees also can speak. And uh, we will meet in the next class with another lesson. So till then, take care. Bye.